In this video, we're going to give an alternative definition of the sine and the cosine. The other four trig functions we'll deal with later. Our motivation for this definition is that currently we can only take the sine and the cosine of certain numbers. Because We've defined the sine and the cosine in terms of right triangles. Here's our 90 degree angle. Here's a different angle. We've defined the sine of the alpha. And we have defined the cosine of the alpha. But this angle alpha is stuck between zero and 90 degrees. This is, I mean, that this angle is positive is hopefully sort of straightforward. The angles of a geometric shape are always going to be positive. It's less than 90 degrees because the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So this 90 degree angle plus alpha plus this angle up here gives you 180. And that can only happen if alpha is less than 90. If you wanted to measure alpha in radian, Alpha is less than pi over 2. So we can take the sine or the cosine of an angle, but only if it's between 0 and 90 degrees. And we can take the sine or the cosine of a number, a unitless number, if it's between 0 and pi over 2. What if we have something outside of this range? What if we wanted to find the sine of a hundred and ten degrees? To do that, we need an alternative definition, and that definition is as follows. We're going to draw the x and the y axis, and then we're going to create this angle, 110 degrees, using this, the, this ray um, emanating from the origin on the x axis, using this as the initial side of the angle. So, 110 degrees around there. Now, we are going to draw what's called the unit circle. The unit circle is the circle given by this equation, x squared plus y squared equals one. For our purposes, the equation doesn't really matter. It's a circle that's centered at the origin and whose radius is one. So I never draw the nicest circles, but I'll do my best. Oh, not bad at all. And you see this terminal side of this angle hits the circle. And it hits the circle at some point. And this 
point that it hits the circle at is going to have as its x coordinate the cosine of 110 degrees. And it's going to have as its y coordinate the sine of 110 degrees. And this is the unit circle definition of the sine and the cosine. I warned you that it wasn't super intuitive, but for angles between 0 and 90 degrees, so for angles in the first quadrant, this weird definition involving this circle is the same as the definition we've given that uses right triangles. So to see that, we'll draw in a right triangle. And let me go down here so I have a little more space. So saying that the x-coordinate of this point is the cosine says that this side of the unit circle is the cosine. Saying the y-coordinate is the sine tells you that this side of the triangle is the sine. And because this is the unit circle, the hypotenuse is 1. And we can see the cosine of alpha is the cosine of alpha divided by 1. Yeah. The cosine of alpha is the cosine of alpha. That is to say, the definition of the cosine that uses the right triangle, maybe it would actually be a little clearer if instead of cosine and sine, I just called this x and y. then the cosine of alpha is x over 1, which is x. So if we use the right triangle definition to find the cosine, we do end up with the x-coordinate of this point. And if we use the right triangle definition to find the sine of alpha, what am I doing? we find that the sine of alpha really is the y-coordinate of this point. So again, I don't know if it's the most intuitive definition in the world, but it does match our right triangle definition. We're not going to run into a, an, an, a situation where this new definition and our old definition conflict.